I challenged our guys, um, you know, whether it was after the game in the media, whether it was in the locker room, at practice the last two days to see what our resolve looked like. And, uh, you know, we came out for walkthrough on Monday. And Coach Fairley just put five guys out there defensively, like who was going to be our kind of scout team. And I told everybody else, I don't know who's starting and I don't know who's playing. You guys are going to tell me in these next two days. And uh, and they did. They did. And, and how we competed in practice was how we played tonight. Um, so. I'm, I'm so proud of our guys. I'm so proud of what they did, how they played, the resolve that we played with. And um, we actually get a couple of days off, which is about as welcome as it comes. Micah, you got a bunch of assists from guys not named Pickett. Uh, Winter had six, I think it was his season high. How, how important was that that ball movement and, and just getting things going? Because I think a lot of people look at the three-point shots, but kind of what led to them. Yeah, I, I, I thought going into this game, whoever could control the paint would win the game. And we had to do it on both ends, right? Because they're so good at getting there, right? Whether that's through Trace, whether that's through Hood Shafino driving, whether it's through Trey Galloway driving, they're so good at getting into the paint and causing you problems. So I thought defensively that was key. Offensively, um, you know, our spacing was horrible against Purdue. And when guys drove, the other guys stood and watched them, right? So it, it, it kind of, we shrunk the floor on ourselves, right? They, they really defended us well, but we also didn't move. We didn't help ourselves. So that was key for us going in was moving, getting out of each other's way so we could attack the paint. It might not show up in how many shots we got in the paint, but paint touches off the dribble, off the pass, off the cut, um, which caused help, which caused rotations. Now we're moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it. And we haven't played like that in a long time. Mike, uh, I saw right before, or right at the end of the first half, you talked to Cam, went out of your way to find him and talked him the whole way in. What was that conversation about, and how important was his performance specifically when it comes to moving the ball and not letting it stick? Yeah, it, it was um, really just strategy, like something I probably should have told him, right, before the end. Um, you know, I call it timeout early. There's usually that end of half timeout that we like to use, and then you can talk about different things. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk about that. so. He's, he's old, he's a senior, um, he sees things. I was just telling him something that they do, how they guard late in that situation. So uh, I was really just apologizing to him. <laughs> like I set him up a little bit um, instead of giving him the info that he needs. I thought he was great. Um, you know, they, they, Trey Galloway is a good defender. He's an active defender and he causes problems. Um, so when they, he was starting, I figured they'd put him on pick. So I felt like we needed more ball handling. Um, so they just can't wear pick down, bringing the ball up the floor and everything else. So it was Cam handled the ball a lot. Kanye got some minutes handled the ball. Evan handling the ball. So having a bunch of guys that can bring it, and now pick and just get down the floor, get to his spots, do different things where they just can't wear him down every single possession. Me? Uh, Seth was in here and said that the last couple of days of practice felt like preseason camp. They weren't that <laughs> <laughs> why, why did you feel like this was the moment for come to Jesus, whatever you want to call it? Why did you pick now? You guys know that I love looking at Ken Palm. And every day when you look at Ken Palm, you just see our defensive rankings just falling freely from the sky. Like we were 85th. 85th, like that. Like you talk about some things that are unacceptable. That's unacceptable. I didn't care. Like, I thought we needed to move offensively. There's some things we need to clean up. We need to guard somebody. Uh, so, like, we had to get back to guard. We had to get back to being aggressive. We had to get back to being physical. And um, it was now or never, right? It was – they were coming in here hungry. We were coming in here hungry. And, uh, you know, we, you know, luckily came out on the right side. But, like, we guarded better, right? 66 points. Even 40 in the second half is too much. But – we guard it better, and uh, that's who we got to be. We, we've been playing through our offense, right? If I don't make shots, I feel bad. Like, no, 
hit a stop. When you get a stop, you deserve to make shots if you're playing that way defensively. I thought we deserved to make shots because of how we guarded. Seth, with a season at 25 points tonight, Clips 1,000 point mark, can you just talk about you know, how he's been getting better and what that moment means to him? Yeah, that, that's, um, I, I thought he just took what the defense gave him. And, um, you know, he, he, he competes so hard. Like, he wants to win. And sometimes it'll get the best of him offensively, like where he just goes overboard a little bit too much. Tonight, he, he stayed in rhythm. He, he took what the defense gave him. Whether it was a shot, whether it was a straight line drive to attack the rim, a drive to a pass, like he kept it really simple. And when he does that, he's really good. Uh, but you know, like when he's locked in, is when he's flying around blocking shots, when he's flying around rebounding like that. Um, that effort that he played with, you know, and, and he was in the right spots offensively to take advantage of how they guarded us. Um, for him to get a thousand points, man, that's special. Like he's earned it. Like you know, it takes take some some uh, continuity right you got to do some stuff early as a freshman you got to do some stuff you know each year and be pretty consistent unless you're just gonna blow it up in one of those years I think one year in 2011 I think Jimmer got a thousand in the season but it's pretty rare um, but like him getting to a thousand is an accomplishment and now like Seth Miles Cam Pickett Funk Five guys on our team have scored over a thousand points, and that's that's a big accomplishment for um, for a team. It's probably not many, and we're old now. We've been playing some college basketball. We got some years behind us, but I also played a lot of college basketball too. And I'm college and high school combined, I'm still looking for my thousand. Andrew, coach, you mentioned in a couple different ways how you guys haven't played like this in a while. Is there a sense of relief that you guys finally kind of play back to your potential? I think so. Um, I talked to Steve Steve Jones today at, before the game, after shoot around. And I talked to our guys before uh, we watched film today, and I just talked about playing with joy and what that looks like. Um, but also, like, apologize to him, right? Because I think like. It's hard, right? I'm still learning as a coach and uh, still young in my career. Like, I've been living and dying on every single thing that's happened. Every single, like, loss, win, whatever. It's just, it's just been eating at me. It's just been stressing me out. And, like, I'm giving that to those guys for no reason at all. Um, like, I wanted them. First, I apologized to them. I told them I'm going to be better but also like play free, like play loose. Like we, we're, we're prepared for what we need to do. Now just go out and do it. Go out and have fun doing it and enjoy the process of it. All right, not, not, not a moment, um, not a win, not a loss, not a game, the process. And it's January 11th and we plan on playing through March and we got a long way to go, but enjoy this process. And, and pointing out like the little steps like the like what our freshmen are doing every day in practice and how they're getting better, like how guys other guys are, are gelling together and playing. Like enjoy that part of it. When we do it, I think that's where we'll find the joy. Martin. Look, I think you played four or five guys off the bench relatively early in the first half, and then after the midway point, you, you throw Evan in there. What's the kind of rationale there or the strategy? because uh, he obviously came in and played well to, to kind of hold him back and, and, and get him in at that certain point. Yeah. Sometimes I'm trying to mix and match lineups, what we need at certain points, right? It's not like anything that he's doing. It might just be a certain thing, right? I'm, I'm doing it off field. Who, um, you know, who we need in, who we don't need in, who needs to be in with who, right? Like when we get to a certain point, who looks tired? <laughs> Right, so sometimes I'm subbing in that way, but somebody might be tired, and it might not be the right lineup for Evan to go in with. Right, so you got to go somebody. You know, you go back with Seth, who had just come out. He goes in, and then you get back to it. So just mixing and matching. 
uh, trying to find the right groups that play well together and get those guys out there. Evan gives us um, so much. Like, you know, their ball pressure, I thought, would be a factor. Um, he gives us another ball handler. Um, so we wanted to try and have a couple of guys in that can handle the ball, that can really, you know, pressure off the pick, um, that can handle their pressure. And uh, so you throw him in, you throw Kanye in, you get Cam in, and you mix and match and who's in and, and when and who's together. Coach, you managed to see Evan Mahavey kind of develop over the last couple of games. How has his development really impacted not only himself, but the rest of the team around him based off his energy? I, he is a, he is an energy giver, right? Whether he's walking around Martin Hall, I'm sure he's talking somebody's head off, right? Like, just when he walks into the classroom, when he walks into the building, wherever he is, he's bringing energy. And when he's come off the bench, he's providing energy. And um, that's just what we need from him. And I talk about Pickett, like Pickett just wants to win. He's doing whatever it takes to win. Like that's Evan. He's just doing whatever it takes to win. So like, where do you need me to play? What do you need me to do? Who do you need me to guard? And here you go. Um, but he's taken like, you know, four or four, one or one from three, three or four from the line. Like he's, he's come in and spent a lot of time with Coach Fairley at, at getting comfortable shooting the basketball and working on his free throws, working on his shot. He's doing that, um, you know, on his own hours, on his own time. And uh, he's just getting comfortable, man. I, I think the last three games, he's, he might, he's, you know, I'm going to set that 25 if I'm hitting a lot, 23. Like, shoot, Evan might have been our second best player these last few games, the way he's playing in, in terms of importance and what he's doing on both ends. Okay, you mentioned, you know, you apologized to, to your team and everything. What made you look inward and what made you realize that maybe there was something that you were doing that needed to be done differently and, and what made you, like, what was that to still make? Yeah. What was that come to Jesus moment like for you? You know, when you go back and watch, you know, like, you know, I, I watch the film. So I see the game film um, on my computer. But, like, you just go back and watch the broadcast, right? I look like an idiot out there. I'm not helping my team. Not helping those guys in the moments that they need. Like, and that's what. Um, that's what I need to do. I need to help. Them. I need to help them through certain moments. And uh, you know, my, my the guys on staff have been great. Like I, I spend a lot of time talking to those guys and just tell them, like, you know, when they see me going haywire, just tell me to shut up and coach your team. And uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of people here in the last couple of days and really try to figure out how I can be better, how I can coach our guys and not put that added stress on them. Um, you know, because, you know, if I'm stressed, they're stressed, whether they like it or not, right? If I'm loose, like they're loose and they're playing free and they're playing in that way. So um, really just watching the games, you know, I can feel it too, right? I, I know it when the games are over, I know it. Um, it's just something I gotta be better. I gotta coach our guys. I gotta help these guys. They deserve it, man. They're they're busting their tails every single day to be good, and they deserve me to to be at my best so I can help them. And, um, I gave them that um, for the rest of the season. Like I got, I got. Them. And who did you talk to that helped you get to that point? There are a lot of people. I don't know if I can go through that whole list of people. Uh, there's other coaches, people outside of basketball, right? Like parents have been here, my wife, like they tell me, hey, dumb, dumb, shut up and coach your team. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Michael.